Thank you for tuning in to 2020 Podcast Series 2020 Vision, The Divine Nine. I'm your host, sir, also member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. And today I'm joined by a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Miss Asha Staples. How are you today, man? Hello, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I cannot complain. Awesome. Um, amidst the technical errors we had earlier, <laughs> I appreciate your patience and you taking time out of your day to do this podcast uh, episode with me. Not a problem at all. Happy to be here. All right. All right. So, um, again, uh, the purpose of this series is to just kind of identify and acknowledge the history behind Greek letter organizations. Uh, I mentioned before that a lot of people just see the glitz and glamour of it, uh, of wearing paraphernalia or attending step shows and, you know, just uh, strolling and things mm-hmm. like that. But I wanted to bring back the attention on the work behind each fraternity and sorority. And so um, with you being uh, a member, I wanted to kind of reach out and discuss a couple of topics with you. So okay. uh, Asha, if you could just give us a history on you and Alpha Kappa Alpha. You know, when you first told me about, you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, why I joined and uh, what separated Alpha Kappa Alpha apart from any other sorority, I kind of did it. I kind of hesitated to do the interview, uh, honestly, because I never really was, you know, growing up, I wasn't exposed to uh, Greek life. I'm actually the first Greek in my family on both Mm. sides of my family, my mother and my dad's side. So um, unlike my other... Uh, Lion sisters, sorority sisters in Mississippi. I went to the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, okay. A lot of them, they, um, you know, their moms were AKAs or their moms were Deltas and they grew up with like the family rivalry and all that stuff. And I didn't really have that story to share, you know, of, you know, growing up with my mom putting me in pearls and, and pink and green everything. <laughs> uh, so. I was kind of green when I got to college. I didn't ever think about joining a sorority. Um, And it's funny because I was kind of recruited by the AKs on my yard. Like, you know, you see them around the yard and they think they're all that, and you know, pissy and all that other stuff. So (laughs) it was just kind of funny that they kind of recruited me and I kind of started taking notice. And actually my freshman uh, roommate, she's now my best friend and my line sister, she um, was one of those that her she pledged legacy. Her mom was an AKA. She grew up around that and, you know, it wasn't even a matter of, you know, who ran the yard. I just saw these women that were, um, you know, beautiful. Besides being beautiful, they were just doing things around campus, uh, servicing, very big on community service, giving back, and, um, you know, just kind of like bosses. And I'm from Atlanta, so that kind of resonated with me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've always grew up being, you know, my mom always said, your name is your brand. So I always mm. used to love being a part of, organizations that were bigger than myself um, to be a part of something like that and not only have that but have this sisterhood Um, I grew up with an older sister we didn't grow up that close even though we're two years apart but you know having this camaraderie of service and um, sisterhood and you know also obviously it comes with a couple perks you think you're kind of cool rocking around uh, (laughs) campus and your camo and stuff or, or your paro and stuff so um, that was another kind of side of things, you know, but just that common camaraderie that knowing that you went through this process with, you know, however many other girls, we had 28 on my line. So just having this uh, kind of undiscussed, um, uh, process, you know, like right. you just, you just know that someone else went through what you went through to, uh, to obtain something. Correct. Um, and so it's, I kind of, you know, equate it to. Uh, people that are in the military, people that are kind of, I guess, I'm not really athletic, but maybe people that are on sports team, Mm -hmm. you know, when you meet other people that are a part of something bigger than themselves and they have this process of learning history and learning about giving back and the importance of, you know, uniting and then doing so in such great numbers, uh, it's obviously something that anyone would kind of want to be a part of, whether you grew up with that background or you didn't. Um, And so for me, that was kind of the thing, you know, I never went to school even I didn't I mean I didn't even see Greeks when I was growing up you know I kind of mm-hmm. saw them on TV a little bit here and there with the Cosby's and a different world how we were talking about but I never even tried to you know like research it and see like well, what's that about like I want to see that until I went to college and actually saw it myself 
um, and saw these women, these groups of women giving back and having this sisterhood that just seemed like it was just a match for anything else. Awesome. That's awesome. kind of my spiel. <laughs> no, no, that's wonderful. Uh, I am the first Greek in my family as well. So I okay. totally understand that, you know, walking on campus and seeing this and you, you have an inkling of mm-hmm. what Greek life is. But when you mm-hmm. see it and they kind of embrace you, uh, mm-hmm. I had the same experience with uh, the Sigmas on the yard. And so uh, I totally understand. And that's why I want to bring it to light It's just it's cool, but it creates a bond during your process that right. it can be is very few that rival it. Uh, that's why I believe that so many um, organizations and sports teams and other exclusive, I want to say clubs. I hate to say it like the way that way, but that's ex- extremely what it is. It's uh, right. these inclusively exclusive organizations. Right. You create right. this bond that's not replicated in many other places. So right, for I, sure. I wanted to show that. Now, I wanted to ask you, Ms. Staples, were you ever part of any uh, projects or any functions that really resonated with you and your letters? Um, projects, uh, projects with the sorority? Yes. Um, we did a lot of things, uh, mentoring things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that probably resonated with me most because my mom is actually a journalist. And so um, I'm, I was born in Dallas and we lived there till I was about nine and we moved to Atlanta. Um, but my mom, she was very active in community service. And I never really, I mean, until people start asking me questions like you just did, like I, it never really <laughs> dawned on me how much my mom does or mm. did when I was growing up that kind of just like resonated with me as I was growing up because obviously storytelling was her thing and I grew up being just like her so just with the TV route right. but like her um one of her biggest things that she was a part of and then also started an Atlanta chapter was working with um teenagers that who became pregnant so mm. the idea of the project was um mentoring partnering uh, a, a teenager, she could be 14 to 18, um, single parent, and partnering her with a sister friend is what they call them. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically an adult that helps her navigate her pregnancy and have a plan for herself and her baby wow. um, up until like the baby's one. And so I not only did my mom put the fear of God in me of being a teen mother, but uh, <laughs> she also just showed me the, the meaning of giving back because some of these girls, they didn't have anybody. And, you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm very blessed where I grew up with both my parents in the household and they're still together. And so I have so much support that I take for granted. And these girls, they literally had no one. Um, even, you know, their, the child's father wasn't too much in their life. I mean, cause you can't blame them. They're kids too. So anything that has to do with teenagers giving back to, um, you know, mentoring youth about how to do anything as far as, you know, going to college, getting the the proper, you know, stuff in line so that you can get um, financial aid and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So anything that had to do with us giving back to youth, uh, mentoring was always something that I was so hip for and ready to do. That's wonderful. I, I absolutely yeah. enjoy, enjoy that. I was part of the uh, education board when I was uh, at Alabama A&M, and uh, mm-hmm. we, we definitely uh, put in many hours uh, mentoring at Lakewood Elementary uh, there oh, in Huntsville. Okay. So I, I totally understand. Uh, it, yeah. And, you and a lot see- of people, a lot of kids, they just don't, you know, even today, and I wish I had the time to kind of get back into like a Big Brothers Big Sisters program because you just see so many kids that are lost. And I mm-hmm. say a lot of times in these days, you have kids raising kids and, you yeah. know, their parents didn't know what to do, so they can't tell their kids. And then they're scared to ask for help. And, um, you know, there's so many lost kids that are out here in the community that just need some type of friendship or partnership or something to, you know, just help them. And I, it's kind of sad to see that there's, you know, not that much help for them and people not having to take the time to be able to be that help. I agree. Uh, we have to invest in the future and that's right. through our kids. So right. that lasting impression uh, by mentoring is most definitely what will make a difference. So for sure. All right. Well, Miss Asha, uh, was there anyone that you wanted to give a shout out to uh, from your previous lines or anyone that really, you know, made a difference with you with Alpha Kappa Alpha? Um, I would 
would just say my my bigs. I mean, they're the ones who brought me through my process, uh -huh. um, and obviously my line sisters, because all 28 of us, we made it through. Um, the, the pretty and the ugly together, and we still continue to do that together, so it's always good. We may not talk every day, but whenever we meet up, which we do at least once a year, well, twice a year, for homecoming and then for Christmas, we always have a Christmas party where we host, somebody hosts a Christmas party, so... We don't miss a beat when we're together, so just shout out to my big, shout out to my, my line sisters. All right. Well, Miss Staples, <laughs> thank you so much, and uh, you have a great day. I really appreciate you doing this. Not a problem. Sorry for the technical issues earlier. Oh, no, it's not your problem. It, uh, <laughs> we made it work either way. So on behalf of yeah. 2020, I'm your boy, sir. Asha Staples, you guys have a great day.